Business Matters is brought to you in part by Lionberger Construction. Hello and welcome to Business Matters, a program on Blue Ridge PBS that strives to explore that subject from a variety of viewpoints and scenarios, featuring interviews with the people helping to grow jobs, the economy, and the Blue Ridge region because business matters. I'm Gene Morano. Our guests are Aaron Burcham, who came aboard this year as Executive Director of the Roanoke Blacksburg Technology Council, and joining Aaron is an RBTC member. Jeff Grafeo is the managing partner of CTS Clarkston Technology Solutions, based in Roanoke and growing. And thanks for both of you for coming in. Yeah. Really thanks appreciate this. Um, you know, Aaron, before you uh, joined the RBTC as executive director, you had been the uh, director of talent solutions for the regional partnership. How are those two roles linked to each other? And I know you have some plans to incorporate some of what you were doing with the RBTC. What made this move a good fit for you? Sure. I feel like we're doing a job interview here, but <laughs> what, what, why, is it, why was it a good uh, fit? Sure. Uh, when I was with the Roanoke Regional Partnership, I was working closely with technology and our other sectors. Um, really became passionate about technology, helping our companies here grow and, and recruit more companies into the region. But really, from a talent perspective, looking at how we can grow companies here through, through mm. better talent, more talent. Yeah. I mean, it seems like I've heard this for 20 years now. Attracting people here or getting people to stay here uh, after school, whatever, yeah. and um, th that's still an issue, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think we can do a better job of, of bringing more people in, letting people know what the region has to offer. Um, we've done a great job branding our region over the past you know, 10 years, I think. Yeah, mm -hmm. we can keep going. And one of the things you were talking about when we were off the air is you know, creating a, filling that gap between people coming out of school mm -hmm. and being hired. Yeah. Talk about that because that's, that's when you can lose some of these people. Sure. Yeah, we're training amazing talent. Uh, Virginia Tech, Radford, across the board, Roanoke College, Hollins. Uh, there's amazing talent being taught here. Um, we need to figure out a, a way to keep them on graduation day. A lot of our companies like Clarkson are coming up with really creative strategies mm -hmm. on, on keeping them here. And so just want to advocate and help connect our higher ed students and recent graduates to the companies and make sure that they know all the opportunities that are here. Mm -hmm. And what Jeff Corfeo is with CTS Clarkson Technology Solutions. Explain in a nutshell with it, what that does, what you yeah, guys do. Sure. Yeah, so we are a uh, strategy and IT management consulting firm that focuses on consumer products, uh, retail industries, and life science companies. Uh, we primarily help companies do strategy work through um, system implementations of technology um, to support their business challenges. And in, in, a, in a wide variety of fields, correct? Yes, yes, okay. that is correct. So basically you're filling in some of the gaps they may have in logistics, yeah, so like that. Yeah, absolutely. So usually companies are hiring us because they don't have the expertise um, to one, be able to take an outside look and bring a fresh perspective around innovation as an example, um, or where they don't have the expertise around mergers and acquisitions. Um, additionally, to solve their business challenges, uh, we bring in technology um, that we have expertise in to be able to implement for them and run their business around you know, supply chain processes or finance, um, procurement, order processing, mm -hmm. um, and it essentially helps them run their entire business more efficiently. Mm. I'm wondering, you know, uh, um, as far as, it's kind of a conundrum. You come out of school, four-year degree or two at Western, you know, tech, whatever, just your technical type stuff. Well, we want three to five years experience. And so are companies like CTS willing to, you know, look at somebody's resume, what they did in school, were they involved in with leading lab uh, things or projects in school, and maybe look for potential where maybe you can start someone cheaper yeah. a little bit, and, and but but nurture that and and bring them up to speed. Yeah, that, and that's actually our model. Um, we are an apprenticeship where we're taking folks that are out of school um, that have the degrees and the skills and some of the experiences that you're talking about, where they've been part of projects, you know, as part of their curriculums. Um, and actually training them with programs that we've had over the years um, that have been very successful uh, to actually train them up with skills. So we're, you know, we are looking for folks that have no experience because then you know, we organically grow them through the years. Um, we also bring in folks that have some experience, you know, several years, um, and actually you know, bring something to the table that we can you know, essentially bring more experience um, along with uh, teaming up with folks that have no experience. Yeah. I'm wondering, Aaron, if the RBTC, Rowan Blacksburg Technology Council, if, if you're dialoguing with uh, local businesses, even some council members, about taking that approach where you're willing yeah. to, they're willing to take a leap of faith, look at somebody, what they did in school, 
maybe more extensive interviewing or something in order to keep some of these people here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I love Jeff's model. I think that if more companies were able to take the risk on more recent graduates and take the time to train, we really could. The, the chances of retaining the talent coming out of our higher ed systems would be a lot higher. Mm. Yeah, and we're looking at other ways potentially to partner kind of across the state in a remote fashion. Right now, we have an opportunity um, to, to keep students here and work in a remote fashion if we can't place them on day one with the local company. So trying to be really creative on how we keep local talent here to support our company's mm -hmm. growth when I mean, the time's right. Do you think over the past year or so where people have been working a lot remotely that companies would be more receptive, let's say a company based yeah. in Northern Virginia, for having somebody who wants to live here, yep. having them be, be more receptive to working here. Yeah, and put them in into a structured type program so we know the remote worker, we can get them involved in our ecosystem. They can have mentors like Jeff. Um, so when the time is right and he's ready for that type of talent, he'll know they're here and they'll know him. So mm -hmm. I think it's a great pipeline project that we can look at. Mm -hmm. um, lots of tactical things we can do, I think, to, to keep students here in the region. And you were saying with the RBTC, you're looking to hire someone sort of in that yeah. talent acquisition role or, or sort of what you were doing maybe with, with, with the yeah, regional it would, partnership? it would be a hub and spoke model. So John Hall um, is hiring another director of talent solutions and uh, Charlie Joel went onward New River Valley backfills their executive director role. Um, I'm sure they'll be looking at another talent person. So they're servicing all the sectors in the region. We want to come in as a technology expert to support the work the regional economic development organizations are doing and workforce development. Right, interesting. Yeah. So what do you think the key to all that is as far as the support role you, you're going to get in? Um, is it really pushing the outdoor amenities here or cost of living or quality of life? Or it's all part of it, yeah. yeah. Um, but also showing them that there are the professional opportunities too. We have a great reputation for high quality life, low cost of living. Now I think the brand that we need to continue to work on is the professional opportunities. There's mm. so many opportunities here that people need to know about. Right. Is that yeah. part of your sales pitch for CTS? Yeah, very much. I mean, it, it's, you know, it's interesting. I think back to when I started, I went to Virginia Tech. So, you know, I was in the area um, and I traveled for 23 years mm -hmm. um, because of, you know, exactly what Aaron's talking about, that there really just wasn't companies here um, that would have the, the skills, you know, or the need for the skills that I had. Um, and when I started uh, CTS uh, back in 2017, it was after just traveling for so long, I, I love the area. I've stayed in the area. It's a great place to raise a family. Um, and there's a lot of talent here because of all the schools. And, mm -hmm. and you know, I wanted to unlock, you know, that potential um, to keep it here within the Roanoke Valley, um, and which is why we started CTS with the explicit model of pulling from the technical talent that comes out of the schools that are around the area mm -hmm. um, with proven training programs that we've had over the years, so. Yeah, I'm wondering if, uh, Aaron, um, if uh, some of the schools, do they dialogue with like an RBTC oh, yeah. to see exactly what you're needing? Hey, maybe we need to offer this type of course or something like that. Even, even down to like, you know, even to a, like Virginia Western Community College sure. level, even yeah. for a CERT program or something. Or is Absolutely. there that dialogue going back and forth? I see the role of RBTC being a convener, a facilitator between the business community and our higher ed, our four and two year schools. Working really closely with Amy White, the Dean of STEM at Virginia sure. Western to align her programming, her degrees um, with the needs. Biotech is really growing in our region. Um, uh, on the commercialized side, I think that we potentially could see a lot of growth in the next couple of years. Mm -hmm. And Amy White's right in the, the middle of the conversation. Same with the, the administrators and faculty at Virginia Tech and Radford and across the board, mm -hmm. um, but to make sure they know what's coming on the scene and the types of skills needed. Do you think uh, even for, uh, like, like for instance, the Fralin Biomedical Research Institute and Carillion Innovation, uh, do you think the best is yet to come as far as spin-offs from that, commercial spin-offs that can actually create jobs and attract people? Absolutely, yeah, Tiny Cargo, Rob Gordy is a great example. Sure. He just won a big award from J-Labs in Washington, D.C. Uh, that right. was that's just so, announced. That's a yeah. particle in milk that can actually carry medicine to the heart. Right, and, and it's a company that came right out of Freeland. So there's a lot of opportunity of research teams spinning out, but they need commercialized space. So there's projects in the region brewing that to look at commercialized space for biotech, and I think we'll just see it grow exponentially over the next few years. Mm -hmm. This is a little off base, but uh, transportation issues, is that a hang up here? Uh, we're going to get a second train, which is good, but yeah. like, is the airport, the fact that it's not a big regional airport, is that an issue or uh, 81 issues? Or 
Well, the, the airport has a new leader, so excited to see what he brings to the table. Amtrak, the extension, can only bring more access from Virginia Tech, from Christiansburg, Blacksburg, mm -hmm. to DC, to run it, you know, through the pipe. Yeah. Um, I think that, yeah, I think we're moving in the right direction. I think that there's a lot of really good energy in the region, in the state. I would say Go Virginia has really been a great um, initiative um, to encourage localities to work together. I think that we've seen more regional work in the last few years mm -hmm. due to Go Virginia type funding. So it, it seemed like Go Virginia got off to kind of a slow start and people were kind of figuring it out, but basically it's a state help funds this economic development engine yep. regionally. It seems like it's sort of picking up steam. It is. There's a lot of really exciting projects, and it sounds like over the course of the next year, a lot of projects that are, that are brewing. Um, but I love the element that it's encouraging economic development, localities, higher ed, businesses to work together across mm -hmm. the region. Talk about, Jeff, well, with uh, CTS Clarkson Technology Solutions. You repurposed a great old building downtown. Let's talk about that. Would you, sure. would you maybe like to see a cluster downtown of other like-minded companies. Yeah, very much so, actually. Uh, so we uh, bought a building back in uh, December of 2019, uh, which was the uh, old Blood Plasma Center um, on Fifth and Luck. Uh, the intention was to make a headquarters for technology for us. Uh, we you know, worked over the past year, uh, finished the project, and opened up, had our grand opening back in mid-July. Uh, it is a fit-for-purpose uh, technology company. A uh, very open workspace uh, for collaboration, um, some you know private huddle rooms to be able to meet in small teams. Um, you know it has the technology to be able to work remotely, which is kind of a premise for our business, and uh, it is uh, fit for growth. Uh, we built it in mind not for today, but for us for many years. Um, I hope we grow out of the building and we get another one. Mm -hmm. um, the intention is, uh, you know, as I talk with uh, you know my other partners. Um, we want to be a technology hub here in Roanoke and be part of that. Um, we've even talked about doing things where, um, you know, you talk about the Freeland Center and they have offshoots, you know, where we can become an innovation center um, and have startups as well as part mm -hmm. of our business, um, give them, you know, some of the guidance and technologies um, and proper uh, mentoring that's needed. Um, we've seen this in other localities mm -hmm. as well, uh, and that's something that ultimately we'd like to grow into. Well, maybe even a company you're working with and they get to the realization that, you know what, this is a great idea, but maybe it's not the focus of this yep. entity. We're going to spin it off, that yeah. type of thing. That's got to be music to your ears. Yeah, I mean, I'll, that the innovation corridor, that's the, the premise. The innovation will grow out of it through having multiple types of companies, education, mm -hmm. healthcare right here, all together, that they can, yeah. the it's innovation can grow. It seems like an area has to get a reputation. I lived in Boulder, Colorado for eight years mm. back in the day. And Boulder became a big hub for entrepreneurs because a lot of people, they went to Colorado yep. U and wanted to stay or whatever, but that it's sort of like people were drawn there because they had this reputation yeah. that the local government was helpful, that there was space to grow, that type of thing. Is, is, are we getting there in this area? I think so, yeah. There's a lot of new leadership, even in the last six to eight months. Um, we have a whole kind of new guard in the region that has a lot of energy, really wants to move things forward. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, I think over the next five years, we're going to see a lot of growth. And talk about what happens in the New River Valley. You, one of your offices is at, is at the Cogro, yep. uh, which in the is Corporate the Research Corporate Center, Research Center yep. which is sort of like a space for budding uh, entrepreneurs, startups. Uh, talk about that and what's happening there. And, and are, we, are we taking enough advantage, do you think? Maybe we are what's coming out of Virginia Tech, for instance. Yeah, absolutely. The Corporate Research Center has a lot of plans to grow in Blacksburg and across the state. So they're even thinking about growing in Roanoke and having space for entrepreneurs mm -hmm. in biotech and technology in the innovation corridor. So yeah, yeah I think it's going to be fun to watch what the Virginia Tech Foundation and the Corporate Research Center do over the next few years. And I know I've heard Dr. Michael Friedlander talk about that. They'd like yeah. to have their own little incubator here. Yeah, absolutely. Help incubate so yep, absolutely. Hmm. Um, talk about, Aaron, the uh, relationship between RBTC and the RAMP, the Regional Acceleration yeah. Mentoring Program, uh, Valley's Innovation Council, and this Verge umbrella. Talk about the, uh, your, your relationship with RAMP for, for starters. Yeah, so Verge is our new alliance, which um, houses all three. Mm -hmm. uh, we are, it, I mean, really all the technology assets in our region have come together in a really collaborative way. 
Um, we're even becoming closer each day um, to share resources and to really strengthen the technology sector. Um, Mary Miller leads our ramp accelerator. She is just uh, a force and is really a, an advocate for entrepreneurs and helping them to get their startup companies off the ground. Mm -hmm. um, and then Valley's Innovation Council is really focused on capital, uh, really trying to bring more money to our region and write large grants. Um, and, and RBTC's right in the middle, supporting both and, mm -hmm. and figuring out how we can grow our ecosystem across the larger, the mm -hmm. larger region. I know, I, I know I've talked to Greg Feldman from Verge right. now about that, where finding those angel investors and the capital it's investors really important. Is, is still a thing where we maybe are a little bit behind the curve there a little bit. I think that we have a lot of energy there. There's a lot of people who are really stepping up and really supporting. the uh, On the grant side, there's a lot of federal and state money right now. And I think that there's a lot of opportunity on that side to help our entrepreneurs grow. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. Um, and it, you wanted to mention uh, the, uh, the newest ramp cohort, which is taking place this fall. Three of the four were sort of housed at the COGRO, at the yeah. Corporate Research Center. Yep. And, uh, and then the fourth, Archive Core, is a spin out of Carillion. Two uh, Carillion physicians are okay. running that company. And that, that's, that's got to be what you want. They're all basically local, regional companies. Yeah. That has to be what you want. Some Absolutely. Interesting, some interesting uh, variations there, companies? Yeah, from drone technologies to um, thermal heat sensing technology to uh, Archive Core has a blockchain technology to help uh, physicians credentialing. So mm -hmm. yeah, lots of really interesting companies, and we have a lot of mentors in the region who are excited to help these four companies grow. Mm -hmm. Talk about the RBTC, Erin. Uh, how many members are there? You know, where, where they're located? Yeah, currently we have 165 members, and right now um, we just are coming off Tech Night a few weeks ago, and um, the energy at Tech Night this year, we had 375 people there outdoors in a safe environment. Right. Um, and what, so talk about what Tech Night is. Yeah, so it's a regional celebration of technology. We uh, really celebrate companies who are here doing amazing things and, and their growth and, and just the, the amazing talent that we have. So that night is it's a fun night for RBTC. In the past, I've attended it for many years mm. and it's always been a favorite night of mine. So it was fun to host it this year. And um, the energy under our, our big tent this year really showed, I think, what the next year is going to look like. And uh, I think we're, we're going in a really good direction. Mm. Now it's just a matter of harnessing that energy and putting it in the right, right. direction. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, is there a common thread? Is there some kind of common thread among the RBTC members? I mean, uh, on the challenge side, everybody's really looking at talent. So that's where we're really putting a lot of resources and time over the next year to five years is to really help be a support engine for ta talent. Um, but yeah, I think that there's a lot of interest in collaboration and supporting each other. Um, yeah, we're looking at a lot of new technical meetup groups to help the technical people in the region mm. have a place to grow. Professional development has always been um, high on the list for RBTC. Mm -hmm. Networking, connectivity. Um, yeah. Talk about some of that, Jeff. You're an RBTC member. Yeah. The networking, things like that, is that valuable? Yeah, I think it is. I mean, I was at Tech Night, and um, you know, I, it's interesting. Uh, you see folks that you know I hadn't even seen, didn't even know were part of it. Um, so it's it's good from that perspective, and then made some new relationships um, around companies that have like you know minded interests. Um, you know, the one of the things I think uh, that you talk about is talent. Um, you know, discussing ideas and way to attract talent um, in different ways, as opposed to, you know it's it's just not the same as it used to be. As far um, as what? How you attract talent? You know, it, things have changed in the past two years. You know, it, when I look back as to. Um, you know, for us in attracting talent, uh, you know, we wanted to set up, you know, I an environment that is a, a, just a great place to work. Um, you know, a lot of uh, young talent, uh, innovators, you know, entrepreneurs uh, that, you know, are part of a very hardworking, brilliant client service focused group. Um, and then now, you know, as you're kind of, again, coming through COVID, um, you still have that same culture mindset, but it's how do you attract those same, you know, same people? Um, you know, to, uh, to your business because everyone's competing for the same resources. Um, you know, we, again, even though we're, we're looking at folks that have less, ta you know, no talent, or not talent, but no experience, right. um, you know, we, uh, we're still, because of the nature of remote work, there's more opportunities for people 
Um, and so how do you continue, because that was our you know, model for years, you know, that attracted people, and, and that's kind of advantage has gone away to a certain extent. Mm. Um, so it's really our focus is on people that want to be in the area. Right. Um, you know, we're, whereas before we used to look at talent and try to relocate some, um, you know, as well as the ones that were in the area, our focus is on people in the area. Well, that hipster location—it's okay, a the hipster dude coming right out of college or a gal coming. Got to be impressed when they walk in the CTS downtown. Yeah, it, very much. You know, it, it's I mean, part of it is people that are in the area that have lived here, gone to these schools, um, or relocated to go to these schools. They love the area, um, and I think that as we provide those you know high-paying jobs for people, it gives them the opportunity you know for a career, mm -hmm. not just a job. You know, coming out and doing something for two years, I'm looking for folks that really want to make a career for themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and by, I think, taking care of folks, um, creating a very rewarding and stimulating environment uh, has been a recipe for success for us over the years. Uh, we've got a tremendous amount of tenure in our company. Um, and, you know, that's what we're wanting to create here with CTS. Mm -hmm. How much of it is an issue for RBTC members, Aaron, to find talent now? And are they willing to kind of change maybe some of their mindsets about someone's got to have five years of experience. Do you see that mindset changing? So. Yeah, yeah, instead of being required for five years, preferred five years. Um, but yeah, I think that the region as a whole has a great brand, has uh, a lot of value in raising a family, and, and we have a lot of assets with um, you know, our outdoor scene and things like that. So yeah, I think that, especially through COVID, people are kind of interested in a little bit different lifestyle a little bit more space, a little bit more activity outside. Mm -hmm. So I think that we have an opportunity to really pull people in, maybe more so than two to five years ago. You know, I'm wondering if the growth of downtown living in Absolutely. Roanoke, yeah. if that can make a difference to attracting people to like a CTS or something where they don't have to live in the burbs and commute. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I think that there's opportunities maybe to add some incentives for people to, to offset housing, to live downtown where they could walk to Clarkston to work. and or take one of those scooters maybe. Yeah, take <laughs> yeah. the scooter, yeah. You know, I've always thought that, and I remember talking to Beth Dowdy about this, that it's if the commute was easier or perceived to be easier between the New River Valley and the Roanoke Valley. Yeah. You know, if you're in New York or something, it's <laughs> not a big deal to go 30, 40 miles, but you're not doing this up and down the hills and yeah. on 81. If there was a way to bring it closer, I think you'd see a lot more talent swapping with people living in one area. Yeah. Um, and, you know, how do you change that? And if we got a train connection, if there was a commuter train, sure. going one way in the morning, back with that, would that help perhaps? Yeah, and, and think about hybrid work too. I think that there, I mean, right now I work two days in Roanoke and two days in Blacksburg and a day at home. Mm -hmm. So it's very different, I think, than before when you had one office structured nine to five. So I think the flexibility in hybrid work makes it a little less intimidating to have to drive to Blacksburg or Christiansburg every day for work. Mm -hmm. um, if you can be home for two, two or three days, but then be with your team a couple days in the office, I think that, that opens up some, some mm. opportunity too. Uh, Aaron, are there, are there are some RBTC members, you don't have to name names, that are maybe ready to take that next step to do what CTS is doing or to yeah. open new spaces, hire more people? I would say almost every company I've met with since I started three months ago, s they say, we love having our business here. We love the opportunities in this region. If we can find the talent, we want to grow here versus having a satellite or uh, another office somewhere else to, to mm -hmm. start to grow. They really want to grow here. So how can our region as a whole wrap our arms around the ecosystem and help, help them find hmm. great people? Is there a way you can, I mean, I lost both my kids to Florida. The lure of the big city is going to get some kids, and maybe they come back, some of them, yeah. but is there a way even, even for a company like CTS to kind of, you know, or the RPCC to get involved more with high school juniors and seniors to let them know what's on the horizon? Give them tours of a CTS or something. Absolutely. Maybe, is that, can you plant a seed like that? Yeah. I yeah. mean, I can t talk to a little bit of that. Uh, so, you know, it's actually uh, something that we've been discussing with uh, different uh, groups around here. Uh, Straight Tree is an example, you know, is a group that we talked to They're right down the street from us. Um, we talked about actually having a program that we set up and um, where we can teach folks, you know, over kind of a training period and get them kind of exposure to an environment like that. Um, something we could potentially partner with the different, uh, different high schools 
Um, you know, we talk about investments in talent as well. We've uh, been talking to Virginia Western um, around, uh, you know, more retooling and reskilling folks, you know, folks that are going to community college mm -hmm. that um, have had a different background in business in some form or fashion, mm -hmm. um, looking to get some, you know, skills uh, where we can be part of training programs to take folks that actually have a little bit of experience, life experience and business in a work, experience. In the workplace, yeah. In a workplace yeah. and then take them and again through a more technology lens. Um, so, I mean, that's, uh, to me, investments in people around here and being creative is the only way we're going to unlock this challenge. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I also believe there's an opportunity coming out of COVID um, for us as a community to attract people. So as much as we mm -hmm. talk about businesses, if we can attract people here because of the remote capability in the great place to be able to live here, lower cost of living and all the, you know, outside environment things that people want to do, mm -hmm. um, you know, you're able to attract more people to this area, um, ultimately to grow the area, but it might be that they're working at other companies. So for, you know, us to be able to attract talent into the area, um, you know, is a focus that we should do as a, you know, community. Last word, Aaron, about 30 seconds. Again, attracting people, we, do we have to, continue to find innovative, innovative ways to do that. We have to show up where they are, whether it's a professional organization or a conference. I think we have to be a little more tactical of where we show up out of market to be in front of the right type of talent, so, yeah. Meaning having a booth or a tabletop? Or yeah, just or be going to a conference? bring in Jeff to be a, a speaker and highlighting what kind of companies are here, um, what type of talent's here to bring in more. All right, we're gonna have to leave it there. Erin Bertram's from the RBTC and Jeff Corfeo is with a CTS, Aaron and Jeff, thank you for joining me today. Appreciate it. Thanks thank for you, Gene. Us. I'm Gene Morano. This is Business Matters. Have a great day. If you have any questions or show suggestions, email us at businessmatters at blueridgepbs.org. And if you missed any of our previous episodes, you can watch them on our website at blueridgepbs.org.